Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mel, I'm an Uruguayan neuroscientist and I have this YouTube channel on the side of my PhD studies. And today we are talking to Iris. She is from Austria, but she's a master's student and currently her studies took her to Sweden, where she is right now. And she's specializing in immunology and in particular she's interested in irritable bowel disease or IBD. And within this disease she's studying Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So she's going to talk about a lot of these topics. Welcome Iris, thank you so much for being here with us. Hi, it's so nice to be here. So to start, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, I'm from Austria and that's also where I started with my education. My bachelor's I did in a small town near Vienna, um, University of Applied Sciences, Wiener Neustadt, in biomedical science. And then I moved to the other side of Vienna where I started with my master's at IMC Krems in medical and pharmaceutical biotechnology. And this is part of a double degree program, which means that I start one year in Austria and the other year, so the master's is for two years, I do in Linköping in Sweden, where I'm right now. And the program is called Experimental and Medical Bioscience. And that's also where I will write my master thesis. I grew up as a very curious child. I loved to learn everything about science. But I never thought that I would go into science. It was only in my last year of high school where I really started to enjoy biology. And then by accident, I found my bachelor's program. And that's when I fell in love with um, science, especially when it comes to the human. And within that, what do you do? I really enjoy immunology and molecular biology. I find it fascinating to learn about all the different molecules that interact to contribute to our health, but also disease. So in immunology, I focus also on molecules from outside bacteria and viruses that can lead to diseases in humans. I try to figure out the, the mechanisms of what is going on in the body. Why does an infection lead to something? And it is um, actually still mind-blowing to me, even though I've now spent two years um, studying immunology quite in depth, how big of an impact one tiny thing can have. So one virus or one imbalance can change the human in so many different ways. And I really enjoy learning about the different cells that interact with each other. So um, with this interest, I found um, a group of diseases called inflammatory bowel diseases um, that I find very interesting. There are two major, uh, let's focus on those two, but two major um, diseases, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Both of them are characterized by an inflammation um, of the gastrointestinal tract. And the difference is that in Crohn's disease, it can affect the whole gastrointestinal tract, so from the mouth um, to your anus, basically. Mm. And for ulcerative colitis, it is focused on the colon, so the, the last part, the large intestine. And patients that suffer from these diseases um, have a wide variety of symptoms, mainly cramps and diarrhea, often constipation and bloating, and it's as you can imagine, quite uncomfortable to live with it. Scientists still don't know what the problem is. Why do these people develop inflammatory bowel diseases? And there are a few major factors that can lead to an inflammation or that might be involved in the initiation of this disease. So I'm focusing on the immunological cells which have been found to play a role in inflammatory bowel diseases, especially Crohn's disease, and try to find, how, find out how they interact with each other. So we have multiple cell types. Um, if you're interested, these are eosinophils and mast cells mainly. Um, and they can also interact with cells of the nervous system. Um, which are called enteric glia cells. So I'm 
um, looking at them in the microscope. And now you might ask, how can we see those cells in the microscope? And that is because I use antibodies that are very specific for antigens, so different kinds of proteins that bind to each other. And with those, I attach a fluorophore, so a molecule that becomes fluorescent when you put a laser on it, basically. So when I look at my sample, which is a small part of the tissue of a patient, I can see where proteins have interacted. I can distinguish between different immune cells and the enteric glia cells and they, they become visible in very beautiful colors um, through immunofluorescence. Um, so basically, I sit at, in the laboratory all day and stain my cells, which is the scientific um, word for coloring. And so I'm coloring my samples um, all day and then I look at them in the microscope in a very dark room which is sometimes somewhat frustrating when it's um, sunny outside and I would like to go outside but I sit there with my samples but the results make me very happy. Very interesting and do you have any kind of result or interesting fact that you would like to share with us? Unfortunately I have not yet had an epiphany um, or found a conclusion to my hypothesis. What is the interaction? Is the interaction altered between patients and healthy um, individuals? However, I've read what other researchers have discovered and I find it very interesting that the gut microbiome or the gut microbiota, um, so all the bacteria and fungi that live in our gut, and how they can affect the human. They found out that patients with Crohn's disease or inflammatory bowel diseases have an altered gut microbiome. So the question is, is this a cause of the disease or is the gut microbiome changed because of the disease? So we're still trying to figure that out. Um, there's also a lot of research ongoing in terms of nutrition and how patients could possibly support their disease or their not healing because it's chronic but their remission so feeling better or having a phase where they're almost symptom free um, with nutrition that is very difficult to design studies for it but i would love to do a phd in this direction and learn more about how the microbiome and immune cells and nutrition um, interact with each other that some people get sick and others don't. Um, there's so much more to know and I'm really excited to find out. Sure, there's so much to discover and also there's a lot of people affected by this disease that they don't have an explanation or they don't know what to do or what's happening. So I think it's really, really important research. You can also probably tell by now that this topic, since we don't know so much about the disease yet, it's very important and crucial for so many patients out there to figure out how can we deal with it? What is the reason for this disease? Can we maybe prevent it? Um, or how can we support them that they can live a normal life? If you remember what I told you about um, how the disease affects the patients, um, what symptoms they have with diarrhea, bloating, um, they're very sensitive often to a lot of um, foods that is quite difficult to handle on an everyday basis. This disease is actually um, a disease that affects so many people. It's around 15% of the world population that suffer from a chronic inflammatory disease. You have to keep in mind that the westernized countries, they are affected more by um, those diseases, but there has been seen a rise in cases in newly industrialized countries in Africa and Asia. So we need to figure out how to maybe stop it, how to help people and also to relieve a burden from the healthcare system. Yes, definitely. And since you have been already through some scientific programs, like study programs, and we might have students watching us right now, do you have any tip, piece of advice, comment that you would like to tell them? Just keep going. There are um, 
occasions where you think um, maybe you're not good enough, maybe you have not succeeded, you don't understand quite well what you're doing, but let me tell you, there have been so many points in my very short career, if you can say so, in science where I felt I had no clue and I was not, um, I should not be here. Um, but that's the thing, like science is trial and error. It's finding out um, why something doesn't work and finding new methods. As long as you keep going, you will find a way. So my advice is keep going, and keep organized. That's crucial to have all your things together. I highly recommend looking into Notion. If you haven't heard, it's um, a program kind of where you can organize quite well. It has a lot of features. Um, look it up on YouTube. There are so many tutorials. I learned it only three years into my studies and I wish I had known earlier. It saves so much time in forgetting things, organizing things. So <laughs> that's also a recommendation. <laughs> Keep going, you're, you're, you're amazing, you can do this. I believe in you. <laughs> yes, that's very good advice. And I will also check out Notion because I haven't used it so far, <laughs> so thank you. And yes, those were all the questions I had for you for today. So thank you so much, Iris, for giving your time for this. I really appreciate it. I know the best in your studies and your future PhD. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was a pleasure to be here. Bye bye. <laughs> And thank you for your attention. If you liked the video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up. I also have a Patreon account. This makes the channel grow and bring more content, especially in Spanish for Latin American communities. If you have a suggestion of a topic that you would like, please let it down in the comments and I will read it and I will take it into account. And see you in the next video. Bye bye.